Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are going to be painting a very cute little truck with roses. And I'm going to be switching the camera view so you can get a better look at that. But I just wanted to say hello from our studio really quick before I end up uh, switching those cameras. So here we go. Let's switch out right now. All right. All right, so welcome, welcome. I'm so glad y'all are here with us today. All right, so we have our lovely setup here, and I do sell this as a painting kit, so it comes with all the supplies that you need. And, oops, hit my mic. I mean, I mean my camera, sorry about that little jiggle. Um, all right, so I've got mine all set up, but basically it does come with all your supplies. So you've got all your tools like this, and then your paint and napkins and apron and all your chores. So the only thing you have to get is your water nearby. And there's also the traceable on the canvas and everything. All right, so I am reusing a little bit of uh, some older uh, paint. That's the good news is that the paint kit actually lasts more than one painting, so that's good. And I've got a little bit of a head start here um, with some white, some titanium white and some Mars black. And then this is our model. So this will also come with your kit, just a little visual there to go by. And of course, you'll also have this online to look at as well. And then there's a bigger visual even on our website too. So this is our start. We have our traceable. Now I have worked ahead a little bit, but I'm gonna go over the process and how to do this. So we've got our uh, pencil that comes with your kit and your permanent marker. We'll be using that for this first step. This is your transfer paper and your traceable and then your canvas. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is to tape your transfer paper down in front of your canvas. I always leave the sides free and clear so that I can lift up and check my work as I go. And then I only tape just like here and here and then just center that and then this with this particular design today, I'm just gonna go ahead and center it. So there's a little bit of overlap here. I just kind of fold this back. You can see this is just lined up at the very top and then placed right in the center. Now, once you've got that in place, then you can go ahead and take your pencil and you just wanna go ahead and do a hard line around all of the line work here. Now on the lettering, Helpful tips on this is that I wanna be sure, like on this line, you can just go inside, but any of these little circles that happen in the middle of the letters, you wanna be sure that your line is on the black and not in the white. So you wanna go you know, outside of that negative space. You don't wanna close off the negative space or else you'll close off the letter and you, the letter will not be discernible at that point. So when I check, see here, my negative space is still intact. All right, and then again, just continue to every place you see a line, we're just gonna make that line over the top. And initially when you do your transfer work, it will just look like pencil line here on the canvas. Now I have worked ahead and used my permanent marker to do a hard line ink, but again, initially to look, let me bring this a little bit closer. So you can see a little bit of that, what looks like a pencil line. So it'll be very faint uh, in the beginning. All right, so I have definitely checked and double checked and I know I've got all my line work done. That is also very important before you actually lift this off. Because once you lift this off and it, you untape it, it's really hard to go back and, uh, well, I'd say almost impossible to go back and match up the line work to get it to be where you could go back and finish out if you forgot anything. So definitely double check your work very carefully before removing this. And if you really, you could just almost do that for a while too, just to make sure because maybe as you're hardlining, you might see some lines that you forgot. All right, but I have definitely done all my work. So I'm gonna go ahead and I remove this. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. All right, and so 
we are all good here. I've got my permanent marker. And then basically, again, every place I saw a line, I just went ahead and did a hard line over the top. That really helps beginners a lot because it bleeds through the paint a little bit. And it will definitely preserve your tray so that you don't lose it with paint. Because uh, it always gives you the ability to do like a wash over the top and to paint over the top of it. And then it will bleed through. And then when, then with by intention, when you do want to obscure that hard line, then it just looks like a nice little shadow underneath. And you'll see how we get that done too. So it works out beautifully. It's a great little trip here uh, for beginners. All right, so we are good on our setup in terms of all the line work. And you can just, at this point, you know, if you just need to pause the video uh, to go ahead and get caught up, you can certainly do that. Also, please note that I have an entire video designated to just tracing. If you feel like you need a little bit more help with that, I also have another video with that too, and that's on your instruction sheet. Okay, so I'm done with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these off to the side. And then we have our little family of brushes here. And this is my mama brush, and this is my uh, little buddy brush, and this is my little bit brush. And uh, all right, so just a second here. I'm gonna. My doggy's having a little bit of an issue. Hold on. Just... He's okay now. All right, so here we go. All right, so with our painting process, we're gonna go ahead and start on the background first. And I'm going to be using my mono brush first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little rinse off in the back. And that's just in case maybe she's a little bit stiff as a brand new brush. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little pat just like that. All right, and then I've got my uh, titanium white out and my little bit of Mars black and I'm kind of getting a little bit dry. I, I may have to use more over here in case that's a little bit dry. So again, this is our little model here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start with just a tiny bit of some primary cyan blue. And you're gonna have brand new paint with your paint kit. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so initially the Tubes will have a little bit of a foil lining. You'll have to take that off so that the paint can flow freely from the tube. And then once you've got that out, I'm gonna do a little pea size amount of that. And then you always wanna recap, that'll help save your paint. Then I'll just go ahead and pick this back. All right, so we have a little hint of that. So we're gonna make mostly a light gray, uh, but then we'll have just like a little bit of a tiny amount of slate in there as well. So I'm going to get started with my mama brush here, and we're going to go ahead and just kind of push into a little bit of this titanium white. I'll give you a visual on that. And a little bit of our Mars black. And in terms of starting point uh, for quantity, I would do like a quarter size dollop of the white. And then with the black, you just need a little pea size amount just like this. So I'm going to add a little bit of water here and then a little tiny touch of that black. We're gonna mix that in and that's going to give us a light, it went pretty dark gray actually. And a little bit more white to that, kind of lighten that up. Got a little bit more water. Make that a bit more fluid. All right, and then we have a really pretty light gray. Now you can add just a teeny amount of the primary cyan blue. And that's going to give it a hint of a slate color. And then I can just start to go ahead and place this across the canvas, sweeping strokes, horizontal strokes that just go across back and forth. Adding a little bit of water into the paint also again helps the paint become more fluid and helps that paint flow into the pores of the canvas. And then you can look and see how this is 
you can just go straight through that lettering, which makes it really nice that you don't have to do all that really precise, tedious cutting work in the lettering. You can do that wash right across the top. And just go back and forth, nice horizontal strokes. And take a look here, see how you can have a little bit of peekaboo with that white canvas coming through. You can want to get good coverage on that. So I'm going to come back in with that color and a little bit of water in there and just kind of let that flow into all those areas there. We're going to go right to this little line in here. Do a little bit of an overlap. That line is bleeding through beautifully. That's what we want. And even just doing that quick wash just through the roses, which is fine. This again, you can see how it's bleeding through beautifully. I haven't lost any of my work. I can see it clearly. And that's why we do that. It just makes the process nice and easy for you. All right, so this is still nice and wet. And if you want to add a little bit more of this like primary sign blue, I'm going to take that brush to a little tiny touch right into the corner. And I can just kind of lightly push that through where I get a stronger accent of that running through the background. Let's do one more. And lightly take that through back and forth. Nice touches there. Good job. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just rinse out now. Okay, we're going to start getting some more vibrant colors here in the background. So I still have my primary cyan blue, which we're going to touch into here in a little bit, but I'm also going to need some cadmium red. A little pea size amount of that. And let's also do a little touch of our primary magenta. We'll brighten that up. The dog there. And it's going to get warm pretty quick here, too, with some more of these colors. So I'm going to go ahead and have these out as well. I've got my cadmium orange and my cadmium yellow. And my primary yellow. Beautiful. Okay. All right, so I'm, I've am i got my mama brush all cleaned up. And again, that cleaning up, you just basically push it into the water, nice rotations, a little bit of firm pressure, spin it round and round and round, and you pull out and just go ahead and dry off a little bit there. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, she's just moist, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little touch into our cadmium red and our primary magenta. That primary magenta, when it hits that cadmium red, it just kind of cools off that red a little bit. Those nice, beautiful pink undertones. And then I'm going to go ahead and do just a tiny little touch of our primary cyan blue in there, too. And that darkens it up. It almost looks a little bit blackish, but we're going to take this into this line here. See, and that's how you're going to obscure that line. It's going to look like a nice little shadow. A bit more of that blue. Just light drag across that horizontal line. And then we're going to take a little bit more here on this side. And then do a stronger hit of that lighter color and just do a nice little light color over the top. Nice light drag so that horizontal color. And again, this is our cadmium red and our primary magenta. And we're going to do a nice little light drag of that a little bit across. So thin little area in here. So I'm going to hold the brush more like a pencil. That'll give me the nice thin line edge of the brush to have that more of a precise line that goes across. And don't forget, if you need a little bit of water to help it flow 
into the pores of the canvas. You can certainly do that. And then here on this other side, a little bit of that red. I'm going to turn the handle of the brush more over to the side, parallel to the canvas, and allow the full side of the brush to face the canvas. Light, gentle hand. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, scrape off the residual paint. We're going to go ahead and rinse out. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that. I'm going to go ahead and get some fresh titanium white. There's that foil lining I was talking about. I'm going to add that into my primary and cyan blue. And then I'm going to go ahead and just take this all the way across. A little bit of an overlap here over the top of that red. Horizontal little strokes, just sweep that across there. A little bit of white in there too, and just kind of sweep that white through there. This is more of an abstract approach to this style of painting in here too. So we're not really necessarily trying to um, match up anything realistically. So give yourself the freedom to just be expressive with this. And if something is a little bit different than what happens, you know, on your canvas compared to mine, give yourself the freedom to allow um, that spontaneity and that uniqueness to occur. So it, it can definitely be a little bit different than mine. So I'm just doing a little sweep of that color in there. I'm gonna match that over here on this side. A little side sweep over here. Kind of lining it up. And add a little bit of water to that. A little bit of touch of white. A couple of streak of that white coming through the way. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and rinse out. We're going to start to lighten up, warm up, and go into those warmer tones. Give a little quick turn here. And I'm going to take a little touch, still using the mama brush. I'm going to take a little touch of this cadmium orange and that cadmium yellow. We're going to work those two together. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little sweep of that. A little bit of an overlap over the top of that blue, just slightly. And there's a little bit of a soft transitional mix between those two so that it's not just an abrupt line. And that can be a little bit muddy and we don't want that darker blue to run through the rest of the canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out again. Because we took care of the transition, we softened it. Okay, which is just firm pressure and nice horizontal strokes back and forth. But now I wanna definitely brighten up, lighten up. So I'm gonna go back into that orange and that cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do some nice little sweeps through here. And I'm gonna be careful and not touch back into that blue. Like that not too, that gives wide. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful though. Add a little bit of water. I'm going to show you a little trick here, too. Add a little bit of water to this. And take your napkin and just touch and just lift it right off. It's another way to kind of come back in and tidy up a bit and still give yourself the freedom to do these light, bright colors through here. And I'm going to match this on the other side. And then let me grab a little bit more of our primary yellow. 
grab a little bit of that white. Start to work this in, just soft sweeping, horizontal strokes. I do little holes horizontally across here. In the other direction. Again, more primary yellow, a little touch of white. Still has a little bit of that residual orange and cadmium yellow in there. Into this little bit of detail here. And then just little horizontal folds. Now I'm being a little bit more tight and rigid with my precision around the truck, but on the leaves, I'm doing a slight little overlap and I can easily cover those up with that green leaf towards the end. But I'm being a little bit more careful around the truck since the truck is white. I don't have to contend with any dark colors coming through. I'm just going to go ahead and just sweep this through. into a little bit of that cadmium yellow, primary yellow, orange. Okay, and then I'm going to start to warm up with more of our cadmium red. Push that in. And a little bit more of that. Grab another dollop of the cadmium red. Grab a little bit of some water. Take the work that into the base, just bound up and forth. Nice horizontal strokes back and forth. Nice little soft overpaint over that lighter primary yellow and those orange hues. It can be a little bit sloppy over the tire since it'll just be black and I can easily cover that and my inking is bleeding through. That's motivating that decision. And I'm going to be careful around the truck since the truck is wet. Go ahead and come in with the not that primary oh, I'm sorry, cadmium red. And just nice soft sweeps across the base here. You can also do little touches of that primary magenta and just kind of sweep that through there. It's also very pretty. And sweep that red. It's kind of over the top of those lighter golden tones. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that primary magenta and just kind of streak that across. And soft strokes all the way across here. All right. So that is very bright and vibrant, very beautiful. And then if you want to add darker tones into it, you certainly can. I feel like mine kind of changes up a little bit every time, but um, you can certainly come back in a little bit more of that primary cyan blue. And then you can add in a little bit of that in there too if you're so inclined to want some more of that. Off little horizontal strokes. Again, this is that primary sign of blue. So if you liked 
the real vibrant look in the beginning, you can leave it or you can kind of add in some of these darker tones. All right. Um, all right, we rinsed out. We're going to go ahead and dry off. Okay, uh, now we're going to go ahead and start to work on our truck now at this point. So I still have my titanium wire. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more. So it's nice and fresh. And again, this is that really light, light uh, gray. It's really more of a light gray. And so I'm going to go ahead and mix up some of this. I've got my titanium white and just a teeny tiny touch of the Mars black. We're going to mix that together. That actually, you can see how powerful that black is. Darkens it up pretty quickly. So again, I want this to be a very light, light gray. So it, it's almost it's going to appear to be whitish, but have a little bit of that um, old weathered look to it. And then I want to mix up a little bit of some brown to have that to work into. I'm going to need some more of my cadmium orange. We're going to have to mix that up. So I'm going to do another little dollop of my cadmium orange over here. And then Mixing brown, so you're going to grab, I'm using my little bit brush here, a little bit of that black, Mars black. We're going to mix that in with the cadmium orange, and that will make brown. So it's starting to get there. You just have to add more black. And then the more black you add, the more it gets to that brown color. You can see it up against the white how it's brown. So just keep adding black until it really gets to like the desired shade of brown that you want. But we're going to be using this for a little bit of uh, shading and darkening in there, a little bit of that accent. And in the meantime, definitely want to rinse this out. And you do not want to leave paint on your brushes or it will harden them pretty quickly. These are acrylic paints. They harden and set up pretty fast. So always rinse out your brushes quickly and then let them lay here and try. And then we're going to come back in with the little buddy brush and I'm going to continue painting into this lovely little duck shape. Now what's wonderful, I'm going to add a little bit of water here. We're getting that nice wash of paint over the top and you can see my inking is bleeding through. That is awesome. That way you don't you can add a little bit more water to your paint to make sure it bleeds through. But that's where we're going to go ahead and shadow in a little bit of that brown. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and just cover it completely with that little bit of very light, light gray that we mixed up in the very beginning. Right up next to the edge here, I'm using the little buddy brush. It's my little flat top brush. Okay. And you can see my inking is bleeding through, which is wonderful. I'm going to wipe that. Right. If we go around that little edge. And again, you can still share through. Yeah. And this is all the little leaves. So we're just going to lightly work in around that. You can be a little bit sloppy when you cut in around the leaves. 
because again, you'll just be able to paint in with that with some sage and it'll just cover all that right up since it's quite a bit darker. A little wash here over the top. And you fill this in. And again, if you feel like you're losing that ink line, which gives you, you know, the, the shape that you needed the track. You just really want to make sure that you add a little bit more water to your paint. And again, if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, you can always just pause. Okay, Anything in the body of the trust there. Make sure I've got all the metal work done. Uh, we also have that little bit of the middle of the tire has got that soft light gray. So I'm going to do when I do that little circular spin, I hold the brush just like you'd hold a pencil. And then I just apply firm pressure and then press and go in a circle and it allows those bristles to kind of fan out in those little half circles from side to side. So I'm going to fill that in. And press and spin. Touch. You can still see that little black dot showing through this little cap that here in a little bit. All right, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and rinse out. Dry off. Oops, still have more water. Now I'm going to go in with my little bit brush and grab a little bit of water and that brown that we mixed up earlier. Do a little twirl into the paint. Okay. And see all those little lines that we've got. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little line over the top. Follow that. We have a little bit more water as needed as we go so that you get a nice soft fluid stroke that goes over the top. Sometimes you have to keep going into that water. Just circle around here. And we're going to keep placing in that detail around the track. And you'll notice that some of this brown is kind of having a nice little soft, gentle mix with that foundation of light gray. And that's exactly what we want. We definitely want a little bit of a soft transition between the two and that paint's still wet. And so as they're starting to connect, as we place one over the other, then again, there's that softness as they connect and that soft transition. Whirl, adding a little bit of water in there too. And a little bit of water, a little twirl. And continue. Oops, too much water. Okay. 
you. Again, we're just following that lovely little inking. And then cross. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little side sweep. So using the side of the brush, I'm just going to kind of pull this down into this little section here. Light pulls, get a little bit of texture, and I'll pull from the base as well. Up. It's a little bit of that old weathered look. I'm going to come back in with that light gray and just kind of work that into the middle as well. I get a soft mix between the two. A little bit of water. And you can add a little tiny amount of that Mars black in here too. A little bit of water. Well, a little bit of that side sweep. So I'm going to Go back into that light gray, push that into the middle again. And lightly work out that soft transition between the two. Rinse out, so you put back into that brown. Come back in and blend as in. A little bit of a curve and a little bit of a pull vertically down. And I'm going to do some white. And again, just kind of hit right here on the side of the brush, light drags down. And lighten that up a little bit. A little push on the side of the brush. And then just kind of fall back into that brown and just kind of let it go back over the line like through again. Just to keep it nice and simple. And we're going to do a little bit of that darker shading in here too. And we've got a little bit more water. And my light pictures here. So it goes up and down across. And again, a little more water with that brown. Almost has kind of, this is acrylic paint, but it almost kind of starts to get a watercolor feel to it because we're adding a lot of that water to it. And fill that in. Okay, light wash of that. And then I'm going to let this set up and dry too, and we can come back in and kind of touch a wash of that distressing once this sets up and dries too. Okay. 
Inhale, and we'll go back into that a little watery brown, do a little twirl. And then I'm gonna continue doing this little bit of line work here. I'm gonna have a little bit of blackish brown too, this base. We have our black and our brown, and a little bit of water. The brown is kind of blacken that up a little bit. Just do it in there, and then a line across here. How about the curve to that line? I'm just going to let you fill that in. Light watery stroke of that. Again, a little twirl, and then we're going to go ahead and follow this line around. And then follow this line again. And then do this here. It's a little lines here. So I'll start there and don't forget to do that little twirl into the paint. That'll give you a nice fine point. I think you be a little bit more precise when you come back into these little details. Make sure I've got all my lines done. I think I have. A little bit of this black and the white. We're going to do a little bit of that dark charcoal gray, add a little bit of water to it, do that little twirl. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that here, a little accent of that dark charcoal gray, and then here. And then we'll do here. to that, just do a little push of that color. Points. White. Do little touches of white in there as well. Little tiny horizontal strokes. A little touch of white. A little accent of white in there. And pushing down into it. More white and then a little push of that, and then just kind of pull it down. You can have just like little brush touches of this to we'll follow the curve. I'm going to track here. Follow that curve around here. Mm -hmm. A bit of water, kind of work that in. And then a bit more water, just kind of soften this paint up a little bit, push it across. Again, this is a little bit of that white and that light 
charcoal gray. And so we're gonna just work this back into the sections of the trap, just for a little bit more texture. All right, it's looking good. Now we're going to go ahead and work in our little black uh, wheels here. So I'm going to go ahead and get some fresh Mars black. Little tiny pea size amount. And I'm going to be using my little bit brush. Grab a little bit of water, work that into the Mars black. Do that little twirl. And then we're going to work this into our tire. And keep in mind your kit, you do have your permanent marker. So if you do need to do a little bit of tidying up with the black areas on this, whenever you're done, just make sure your paint is completely dry. And then you can come back in and tidy up with that black marker too. It's a nice little cheat. And we're just going to softly go around that curve. I think continuing to add just a teeny amount of water into the black paint helps it be more fluid again. And then we're going to do that little twirl. That'll give you a nice little fine point to be able to continue to do these finer details in here. Soft curve around. And you still see my. Lovely ink line that we know. It's bleeding through beautifully. It's what we wanted. Okay. Again, a bit more water and more Mars black, a little twirl. And it's just going to be a tile here. Around. Get patient with it. All right. And then we have a little bit of our blackened window here. And then I have a little trick I'm going to show you for the uh, little dots in the middle of the tire. But we're going to carefully go into this little window. And then we can do a little touch of that charcoal gray, a little bit of water with that too, and just do a little tiny tiny lines. Let that be a little bit of reflection. And then with that, and we're going to take 
the end of the brush, the little, this part right here, and we're gonna dip into the black paint. There it is. And then we're just gonna do a little press right there in the middle of that tire. And there's that tiny little circle you need. So that's a great little trick. Great way to make little polka dots perfectly. And then just dry that off, get that off there just in case. Right, and then we have our little heart here over the top. So I'm going to use, I'm going to grab a little bit of this white and we're going to mix that into the brown and lighten that up a little bit. And a little bit of that cadmium yellow. There's that color. I'm mixing up a gold, like almost like a gold ochre color. A little ochre. A little swirl in there. Kind of like when you add the white to the brown and then that cadmium yellow almost becomes like a, a taupe or a golden ochre color. Depending on how much of that yellow you put in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a nice little. What shape? And you can leave this very subtle or uh, I'm also going to show you what it looks like. You may do a little bit of color on this as well. Or you could even do white to do a white part on there too that's very crisp and pops out over the top. But I'm going to let that set up and dry and then I think I'm going to show you what it could look like. With perhaps a little pop of color over the top. But for now, while we're letting that dry, we're going to go ahead and come back into our roses here. And I need some titanium light. Put that up there. I'm going to take our lava brush and grab a hint of this brown and then to the soft touch of it. into that light gray that we still had earlier and, and push that into that titanium white. And then we're going to go ahead and work into these little circles for our roses. So initially those roses are going to kind of look like big lumpy circles. And then my pink is still bleeding through this one thing. Three big lumpy circles now. Right off. We're going to be using the little bit brush, a little bit of the water and the brown. And now I'm going to take that light brown that we mixed up, which is our white and our brown. You can have a little bit of that cadmium yellow in there too to kind of warm it up. And then you can see your line work that's still here. I'm going to pull mine up a little bit to where I can see it. And you can also just abstractly do it freehanded as well, but it's going to feel kind of like little parentheses, which you're going to bring in all the way to the center. You can soften this up, up even more with even more white if you want. Look over that a little bit over the top. But basically, that motion again will feel like little parentheses that come around that shape. So again here, we'll twirl into that light, light brown. And I'm just going to take that around that shape. And again, it just kind of feels like those little fantasy shapes.
Mm -hmm. A few other little random flowers can come out of the side there. And then you can I'll leave it more minimal, just like this, or you can even soften it up a little bit more by coming in with more white. Lighter shade of that brown, and just you know, working that in to the you know, soft coat of this. A little bit more white here. Still using a little bit. And then there's more of that pure white. It's going to be a soft touch of white. I know that same shape that we just did, but I'm going to open it soft white again right over the top. Again, this little soft little parentheses shapes, just bringing in a little bit more texture. This is again, this is a repeat of what we just did little parentheses shapes. Okay, bring them in again over the top. So we started with white and then we did our shadow with a light brown. And then we came back in with pure white to do another touch of that color over the top. And just fill that same like little parentheses, but continue in a circular motion of those parentheses. Don't just take your rows and go parentheses, 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 parentheses. You know, don't think literal parentheses, parentheses, always just like this. I see beginners do that a lot in my classes. And they end up with very interesting roses that, uh, <laughs> uh, well, there's a word, I'll call it Virginia, uh, just very um, female. Yeah, it's interesting. So again, remember to keep going in that circle with that. Yes, important. Good job. Okay. Now, uh, on this heart, I'm going to play a little bit, then I'll have this white lady up and do a little twirl. And then we're gonna do a little white here. Let me show you that more neutral heart. I may just leave it at that too. That's kind of fun. It's a more neutral. I think I'm digging that. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Okay. Little touches of white again over here. Okay, and let's make some sage green. All right, we're gonna grab some cadmium green. Dollop over there. We still have a little bit of our primary sign blue. I'm not doing a little bit more of that. A little touch of our bright yellow green too. If you want, this is quite lovely. Um, you can also use a little bit of iridium, and that will bring you to more of a turquoise color. But we'll grab a little bit of that for some shadowing just in case. I'm going to take my little bit brush and a bit of water, but then mix this bright yellow green and cadmium green. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that black in there. It's going to give me a bit more of that sage color that I want. And a little bit more of the white, lighten up a little bit. And some water. There's my beautiful side chair. And then we can start to work in these beautiful little leaf shapes. And then that lovely. Again, that's that feeling now, that soft curve again, which feels like that parentheses again. But you also just want to be sure and follow the shape that we have here with the little trace that you had initially. And then all this beautiful base color. 
And you can push in a little bit of brown as you go to kind of add a little bit of that shadow. You know, or you can do it with that really pretty uh, viridian. You can darken up with a little bit of that too, which is also really pretty. Again, I'll start with that lighter, beautiful sage color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and look into their shapes. I'm going to mix up a little more here. So that bright yellow green, cadmium green, yellow green. We're going to get all those mixed. And a little bit of that yellow. That was probably too much. Start slow with that black because it can really darken it up and change it dramatically. It's crazy. White. Water or fluid and coral into a nice fine point. And look into those fine little shapes. A little bit of that viridian as we go. Add that little bit of shadow. Okay, lines. So the viridian definitely kind of pulls in some brighter tones. If you want it to be a bit more muted, then I would recommend going into more of your brown to kind of do those lines as you go and keep it a bit more muted. So you can kind of determine which look you like better. And again, our brown is cadmium orange and black. So, let's see, so should be a little bit more. That's okay. It'll kind of soften and move into that room. A little bit at a time. You can just soft little curves here. And you can kind of take them out to a nice fine point with your brush. And it kind of feels like little parentheses, little parentheses on either side, and then you taper it out to that point. And then you can push into a little bit of brown to kind of follow up on the curve on the outside of the leaf to keep that defined. So the lighter sage green comes into the middle of each leaf, those little touches, and then we can kind of do a soft little outline of with the, the light little brown around the outside of the leaves there. Don't forget about water a little bit to help that paint and flow. I'm do my brown as I go so I don't really lose the memory of where that leaf was. So you can kind of outline it as you go and kind of softly keep that shape in place. So it doesn't just look like a big green blob. Next 
going back and forth between our light sage and then our brownish sage, or if you want to go that route with the little bit of the viridian, you know, you can have little touches of that in there too. Yeah, those little bits of shadow. That beautiful sandwich. Draw a little curve and into a point. Parentheses, parentheses. Let's see, let's see. That little shape. Do that meridian, and that burn all the time. Breathe in a little bit there. Alternating back and forth. And just have fun with it, little soft curves back and forth between that, either that brown and sage or that meridian. Soft little curves. You can also do a little bit of that too. A little bit of that shadow. What are kind of touches in there? That soft curve. All right, very pretty. And then you can do little touches of some blue in here too. I'm going to rinse out. Dry off. And grab a little bit of some, some more titanium white. And we have our primary cyan blue still. I'll take a very close up of this picture here. Um, one other thing you could do too would be. Add a little bit of violet to this for just a little hint of periwinkle. So it's going to be white, primary sign blue, and then the violet. And I think that's really pretty. So we've got a white, primary sign blue, and our violet. And we're going to do just little touches of this as well and just. Lightly, either let the paint set up and dry before you do this so you don't get that mix, or you can just have a very gentle hand and just kind of barely lay it in over the top. I'm going to have a little bit of this flower kind of just touch down over the top of the surface area. And then we'll have a little bit peek out on this side.
Let a little tiny touches with the brush give that little bit of flowering effect and then a little bit of white and then to that yeah, accent. That one. Okay. Look at that white and that really pretty color that we just mixed that. I just have a little tiny touch of the back and put it on it. Just light little light gentle hand, let it just kind of barely rest on top with a bit more texture. Really pretty there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and rinse out. All right, and then let's talk about the lettering. There's some options here you can do. So you can do this light tone if you want, or some people like to do the permanent marker if you have a shaky hand and the black letter in the back is you know really nice. So you could just blacken it in with the marker, which is quite lovely if you want to do something like that. That's certainly an option. I did want to make sure that you talked about that first. So you didn't go to a lot of trouble. And then, then I mentioned this and you go, wow, I wish we just said that first place. Uh, so that's a, a great way to go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mix up this nice little warm tone. I'm going to grab some black. And then some It's light brown. So light brown's pretty. Or you can warm it up a bit more with some happy and yellow. And then we'll dollop there with that. Or you can do it another completely different color if you want. I'll just tell it to you. Or, you know, white's really pretty too, actually. Yes, light, white, oak kind of color here. So, I want to make sure I avoid the negative space in my sky around that letter like what you've got that's negative space in there so you want to go around that that's really important you want to a nice fine point here just lift off of the light hand and there's that Negative space in the middle of the O, so I definitely want to go around that. And to our B here. Okay, it's looking good. And then our E. And again, be very careful on that negative space. You don't want to lose the identity of the E, which can happen if you accidentally block out that negative space with paint. So now that shape. And we did it. Okay. So good job. Speed you up that paint there. Thanks out. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and come back in. That same color we just mixed. I'm going to go ahead and take some water, push into that, do a little coral. Mm -hmm. 
طبعا Soft stroke there. And use this to do a little bit of shading. Put a bit of that orange. Brown again. Water. Like that little water, yeah, it's real soupy. Mm -hmm. Just maybe a quick little one after that, right over the top, since this is dry, I add a little bit of that distressing right over the top. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be So there's that match there. Yeah, I can think that brown is going to be a difference of it. I think we're just about done. Yeah, looking good, very pretty. All right, so last step would be to sign your masterpiece. And you can certainly do it with your little bit brush. Uh, if you wanna just paint it on, remember that trick, a lot of water, a little twirl, real, pa you know, be very patient with it or you know, I kind of like the little permanent marker look. I sign a lot of my pieces that way. And so if this is all dry, that's another key step. Make sure it's dry or else you just ruin your permanent marker. Uh, but basically you just sign. Ta-da, and it's done. So there it is. There's our beautiful painting, our little left truck. It's awesome. All right. Well, thank you again so very much for painting with us today. It has been a true pleasure. And again, all the supplies that you need are on our website at tipsyartist.com. And if you have any questions, please leave them below or you're welcome to email me at tiffany at tipsyartist.com on our website. That also works perfectly. And we just want to thank you all again so very, very much for joining us. Y'all have a beautiful rest of the day. See you real soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.